När människor uttrycker kritik mot att drag queens ska läsa sagor för barn får de höra att de är homofober och att de hatar homosexuella. Men har kritiken mot drag queen story hours något med homofobi att göra? Om detta ska jag tala med Robert Wallace som är en av företrädarna för den amerikanska gayrörelsen Gays Against Groomers. Och vi har nu med oss Robert på länk från Arizona. Welcome to Ricks, Robert. Hello, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you so very much for being with us. First of all, tell us, what is Gays Against Groomers and why was this organization founded? Yes, thanks. Uh, Gays Against Groomers was founded uh, in order to combat what is happening in the name of LGBTQIA plus inclusiveness, which is to say that our community, uh, the narrative has been hijacked by people who want to uh, take the inclusive um, uh, measures way too far, particularly where it comes to kids. And so we are a coalition of uh, LGBT people who are fighting against the sexualization, indoctrination, and mutilation of children being done in the name of LGBTQIA plus mm. inclusiveness. Yeah, and how would you define a groomer here? What is a groomer? Well, there's a few ways to define a groomer. First and foremost, we're talking about people who are grooming children to uh, uh, to be potentially uh, molested or sexualized for those purposes. Some children are groomed into believing they are another gender. They're groomed into changing their gender ide ide uh, identity through the, the clothes they're put on, through the activities they're put through, the things they're exposed to. And further, we have uh, grooming happening just in the exposure of the ideologies which are being spread in the schools, um, whether it's in the form of the books that are being brought in, the homework assignments, the propaganda that's being put in the school, or the kinds of uh, civic uh, activities, whether they're pride parades or drag queen story hours that are being done um, in order to bring everybody Uh, to bring the kids into uh, some sort of communion with the gay community and to some sort of uh, to make it a normal thing for them. Uh, and in that process, we end up perverting their minds with ideas that uh, they don't need to be exposed to. Mm. In Sweden, we have a very vivid debate right now on the drag queen story hours, which is a new phenomenon in Sweden. And uh, uh, it has been said by many that this is a kind of uh, sexualized entertainment for kids. But the counter argument from the LGBT movement, as well from the liberal left, is that drag, drag queen story hours have nothing to do with sex or sexuality. What do you think about this? Well, that can be debated. And in some cases, there may be a case-by-case -case basis where there's a lesser activity than at other times. But there are several levels to this that do, in fact, make this a, a sexualized uh, activity. So for starters, just because a drag queen is not wearing a, a lacy underwear or may seem to be covered, uh, there is a, a lot of undertoning, a lot of Uh, background to consider when it comes to dealing with a drag queen. We know we're dealing with what I would even call a sexual clown. Uh, this is a person who's dressing up usually for entertainment purposes. Uh, in this case, a, a drag queen is usually not transgender. They're usually more of a transvestite. They're cross-dressing, that sort of thing. So there is that sort of gender confusion. The main part is, though, the books that are uh, generally chosen the lessons that are put in front of those kids that are being read to, there is the agenda behind that. And that is the main concern. We're reading books that encourage kids uh, to start looking at their sexuality way too early, to start considering these uh, alternative lifestyles, these alternative sexualities and fetishes and uh, way too early. And, uh, and we're normalizing a lot of uh, what used to be considered uh, somewhat abnormal behavior. Uh, you know, we can teach kids to be nice to other kids who have two dads or whatever, uh, but what's really happening is they're seeding in these, in these talks a very progressive ideology uh, that has nothing to do with children and uh, is actually quite destructive to 
uh, our traditional values. Yeah, uh, a common argument from the, the liberal left here in Sweden is that every kind of resistance against, for example, the drag queen story hour phenomenon is based on homophobia. What do you think about this argument? <clears throat> Well, it's pretty clear that as soon as anybody stands uh, against a LGBTQ person who's trying to do whatever their activism is, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have that card thrown. You're going to have uh, names called, you're homophobe, you're transphobe, etc. Mm. And I think the problem is that we have these activist types who so closely identify with their sexuality that they think that everything is about that. They can't even fathom that perhaps they might be doing something inappropriate by societal standards. They can't even fathom that. It has to be about my sexuality. You have to be hating me for being gay. And I think the problem uh, with that is what you're saying or what these people are saying is all gays are equal to the, the most uh, progressive ideologies and agendas that are being pushed by the uh, the community right now. Mm. And again, I put it in quotes because they have been hijacked. But for the most part, most gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender people do not have it on their mind to do what these activists are doing in the name of the LGBTQIA uh, community. And so we do have those individuals who are doing that, making extremist statements, uh, slandering people in order to scare people into uh, silence. And we have to stand against that. We have to let that go right through our ears because everybody who's paying attention knows it's not that. Mm. And saying it doesn't make it true. Yeah, I think you have mentioned it, but you're also engaged in a work against gender affirming care. Could you explain this a little bit? Yeah, well, we have a problem when a child, uh, especially with all the propaganda coming from every direction, who may come to consider for a second, maybe on the other gender, will immediately be taken up by authority figures or people within the school and encouraged to continue down that line. So they'll be told, well, maybe you are a girl. Let's let's start some trans transitionary activities. Let's look at, at these things and we don't have to tell your parents about it at all. So we have cases here in America and in, in California right now where the state is actually protecting children who are going through these identity crises from their own parents. And so that means that these kids are not going to be able to get sound advice from the people who raise them and love them. Instead, activist types are going to help them walk down a, a, a path that there's really not much return from. Right. Because once people go down these gender affirming routes, which eventually involves uh, the uh, hormone uh, uh, therapy, uh, the hormone replacement therapy, um, and then eventually surgeries, um, you can't really come back from that. Your body makes permanent changes. And when these people, the 87 and a half percent desist, which they will, they're going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck with a deformed body uh, and irregular health. Yeah. And, and finally, can you see that your work is producing or do you hope that your work will produce any result on the political level? Yeah, we've had, uh, I think it was 12 or 13 bills we last acknowledged that we took part in helping pass. Mm -hmm. uh, I myself have gone and spoke to our state Senate in support of different bills. Uh, and our members go and speak to uh, politicians, community leaders. Uh, we go to town halls and school board meetings. And we're involved with many other coalitions banding together, trying to uh, put a stop to uh, what is coming full force uh, by means of the progressive leadership who's really forcing us down the throat of everybody else. Mm. Okay, Robert Wallace, thank you so very much for giving us this, uh, this information. My pleasure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Richard. Yeah, thank you. Okay, tack alla för att ni tittar på Riks.